And Concordia actually won against McGill uh, to start the season, Alex. Yeah, absolutely. That was a big win for the Concordia Stingers. Obviously, it was also a coming out party for a lot of their rookies uh, in that game. Obviously, Carl Neal on defense and Alexi Pepin getting a goal in that game as well. Um, so expect, you know, that kind of game tonight. Uh, you know, both games between these two teams have actually been very low scoring. Actually, you know, the first game was 3-2. to two. Last night was 2-1. to one. And, you know, one thing that the Concordia Singers really struggled with last night was getting shots on goal. They were almost outshot double uh, by the McGill Redmond. Uh, a great goaltending performance, though, for Malcolm Antoine Sokut, who seems to be getting the start tonight. Again, Marc-Andre Lemont likes to start his goaltenders. Um, you know, if he has a starter, he likes to stick to that starter, even if there are two nights in a row. And obviously playing your crosstown rival to McGill Redmond two nights in uh, as many, um, two games in as many nights. Uh, not surprising that he's got some cut starting. Absolutely, and one thing about Sir Cut, this is the third time he's going to be facing McGill uh, this season. I believe he faced McGill in the Quarry Cup last uh, year as well, so Sir Cut getting familiar with this rivalry. Olivier Simon here is going to take the jump ball up against Harvey Matou, a first year out of Paris, France for Bishops, and Simon wins it back to Henderson. Mong bringing it up for the Stingers. Simo back to Mong. Mong. Mong playing with it. Sends that one to Bollier. Bollier sends it in deep for Simo, and Simo lays it up easily. And now Bishops will take it up the court. And so Mong's going to bring it up here for the Stingers. Mong. Down low to Henders to Sufrar. Sufrar to Kud. Kud sends that one. It's intercepted by Boisse, who sends that to Najee the other way. To Kamane. Kamane dunks it. 29-27 for the Gators. He's going to get three free throws. His third one. Looking, looking to get one, at least one of them to go. He does. 42-41 now. As Ricardo Mong takes it up for the Stingers. Mong commanding his offense. To Simon, back to Mong. Mong driving on Thadal. Keeps going. Has to get out of the zone. He'll go for three. Gets it to go. And that's back to back three pointers for Ricardo Mong. His shot is on fire so far in the second half. Throws it up. And it's no good. So Stingers come back the other way now. Here's Nicholas Noble. Noble driving the basket. He gets stripped of the ball. Ball will come the other way, and now it is in the hands of the Gators. Fog down low, intercepted. Here comes Noble the other way. Noble sends it to Mong. Mong elects not to go for three, lays it up, almost gets it in, but it'll be rebounded by Naji, and the ball will come the other way. Boisse dribbling with it. He's going up against Mong here. Boisse. Cuts in to Fogg. Fogg sends that down low to Najee. Actually, that's Howarth, and Howarth will get it in for two, 52-47. Mong sends it to Simon. Simon for three. He gets it to go. A confident shot from Olivier Simon. Gets it to go, 55-47, an eight-point lead for the Stingers with 3.08 remaining in the third quarter. Bollier sends it to Noble. Noble almost gets it to drop. Malcolm Henderson can't get it to fall off the rebound. And now Bishops comes back the other way. Boisse. Boisse charging the basket. Sends it back to Kamane who goes for three. It'll be a two instead. But he doesn't get it to drop anyway. Bollier to Noble. Noble gets thrown to the ground as he goes for the shot. And he'll get two free throws here. Obvious foul on the Bishop's Gators. Mong for three, gets it to go, 76-61, and Ricardo Mong is on a roll. He's got 21 points tonight. Great job by Mong. Bringing that Stingers lead back up again. They're up by 15, their largest lead of the night. Big pass there by the Gators. 
sends it to no one though. Coot picks it up with speed. He's up against Boisse. Boisse gets called for the foul. So now Coriolan is just going to run the clock out really. Sends it to Gerud who takes a three, misses it. Now Bishops has it, three seconds remaining. Boisse throws it up, doesn't get it to fall and that is the end of the game. The Concordia Stingers tied at halftime at 33-33, come back and win 88 to 71 against a crafty Bishops Gators team that was really giving the Stingers a hard time in the first half, but the Stingers came right back and took it to them in that second half. So a great job by the Concordia Stingers. Concordia Stingers basketball 2-0 on the night as the women's team won their first game, 82 to 59. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's been a pleasure broadcasting. I'm Alexander Cole. Thank you for watching. Shots on goal are just six to one. I believe it's about six to three actually for the Stingers. But regardless, it is zero zero here. And that was a great glove save on that sequence by Gwen Doe on Rafael Lafon 10, just absolutely flashing the leather, showing us why he's definitely one of the better goaltenders in the OUA. Carl Neal now with the puck. Perhaps one last rush in the cards here for the Stingers before the game returns to five on five. And it is Boschman with the puck. Boschman to Scott Oak, backhander, and he scores. It's 4 3. 3 3. And a beautiful goal there by Scott Oak. Give and go with Dominic Boschman. And just a great heads up play by Carl Neal, breaking it out of the zone. And just like that, we have a tie game. It's 3 3. It's 4 3, is it not? 3 3. No. Are you sure, Alex? I'm, I'm very sure. All right, fair enough. Uh, Oak switches places with Zhang Oak curling his way up top. Oak with the toe drag. Oak driving the goal, and his uh, shot doesn't go through. Charbonneau will shoot this time, and it goes in, and it trickles through Rivers, and now, Alex, it is 4-3. Yes, indeed, it is 4-3, and that's one of those rare Charbonneau goals, but... You know, Charbonneau, he doesn't get that many opportunities to shoot from the point, but when he does, he has a cannon of a shot. And we saw him score a goal like that, I believe, against UQTR last year, and he does it this time around against uh, Gunnar Rivers. Gert Borga's shot stopped. Boschman taken down. Whistle goes, and another really cool thing, uh, does Borga have a point today? I believe he does. Okay. He at least had a shot on goal that I believe on Carroza's second goal, Maybe. he had the shot that led to Carroza okay. getting that goal on the rebound. But yeah, I mean, um, you know, two good saves there by Shane and of course the Concordia Seniors. Yeah, Beauregard, um, you know, he it's, hasn't, it, he hasn't uh, been on the score sheet no, as not often. As not as much, but that's a good thing for the Seniors. You need to know that you can rely on your other players, not just one guy to get all your scoring. For sure, as Borg got down low when it's in. Beautiful passing. Pepin to Sanche, and it is 5-3 for the Stingers now. Yeah, and Beauregard's going to get a point on that one, obviously. Yeah. The, the first assist. But a great tic-tac-toe play by the Stingers, and now they have four power play goals. I mean, they're just padding their power play statistics at this point. Um, obviously, first place in U Sports when it comes to uh, power play opportunities for a reason. So 5-3, they were down 3-1, and they've scored four unanswered in yeah. this period. So that's pretty crazy when you think about it. I mean, we're not even out of the period yet. It's 5-3. That's a final score on most nights in oh, U Sports. Oh, for sure, yeah. And that's the, that's the beauty of it. First period, wow. Here's a tell. Borigal. On his backhand, receives it. He throws it on goal. It's in. What a what a seeing eye shot. It looks like Scott Oak got a stick on it, and it is six to three for the Stingers. Yeah, cool. Shane didn't even see it. I don't think he didn't even move on it. Kind of looked like he was looking the other way. Thought the puck was somewhere else, and then just an easy shot there and an easy goal for the Stingers. And now they're up six to three. They have five unanswered goals here. Now Reed. Gains the zone, and now we over to Shaw. Shaw has a bit of space to work with. Bad angle, though. Throws the puck into the slot. No shot on goal yet for the Voyageurs. Terrien working his way in. Over to Dion. Dion up top to Shaw. Shaw with some space. He shoots. It hits the glove of Turcotte, and it goes in. It looks like it'll be Terrien who gets the goal, and uh, we're right back to the score sheet, Alex. Yeah, that was a great play there by the Laurentian Voyagers. And, you know, the skilled play there. It seemed like the puck had never touched the ground after the rebound. It was just, you know, some nifty play, uh, batting the puck out of midair by Terrier to get the goal. 
And now it's 6-4, so still continuing that big offensive night by both teams. The Swiss native not relenting an inch, although a bad pass there means that Borga gets the puck to Gosselin on the page. Borga with a shot, and it is in. And Beauregard gets his first of the night. I mean, a little bit too much time and space there is what Laurentian gave up to Beauregard, and he notches the Stingers' ninth goal of the game. So this is uh, the most goals the Concordia Stingers have scored in a game thus far this season. So uh, what did the Stingers do right uh, tonight that resulted in this offensive explosion? I think the Stingers, what they did great was they were able to find open ice. I think the Voyager defense was giving them way too much time and space. They were giving them way too many power play opportunities, and that is really what crushed them in the first period. The Stingers scored, I think, four or five power play goals in that first period, and that's really what propelled them to the eventual victory. So uh, it was basically that, and you know, the Concordia Stingers, they didn't have a great first period when it came to defense, but the defense tightened up. They played their... Uh, assignments a lot better in, in the, the second and third period and they eventually rode that to the victory and Marc-Antoine Soukat didn't have his best game but uh, after the first period just like the defense he got tighter in goal and uh, overall it was a good game for the Stingers. Not their best like the scoring would show but overall a solid game.